Good to be in Manchester. I like what I feel in the house right now. Amen. Amen. Man, I appreciate the spirit of the Lord. Amen. I appreciate the word of God. Amen. There is nothing greater on planet Earth than living for God. Amen. There's not, there's nothing. Yeah. Moses could have lived under the leadership of Pharaoh all of his days. But the Bible says he forsook Egypt. And he, he esteemed the reproach of Christ far greater than the riches that were in Egypt. Glory. Amen. 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 When he made, when, when the writer in Hebrews makes that statement, that he esteemed the reproach of Christ far greater than the riches of Egypt. Amen. And the Bible says because he had respect yes. unto the recompense of the reward. Yes. Amen. He had respect to what was coming down the road. Amen. He said I can, I can do without the temporal pleasure right now yes. because I know what's coming later. Amen. And I, I'm not preaching that this morning, but man, I feel I feel like I'm about to blow up. Glory! Yes. I feel the Holy Ghost so real right now. And that song, that last song you sang, man, I'm thankful for the joy of the Lord. Amen. Man, we ain't supposed to be just mully grubbing people. Amen. We're supposed to have joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. And the old song says, "And the half has never yet been told." Man, I'm thankful for the presence of God, for in his presence is fullness of joy. Yes. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. I can find some pleasure in the world, but it's only temporary. It's seasonal. It's only seasonal. But at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. I'm thankful for his presence today. Can you give the Lord a hand clap? Praise God. Stand with me and go to the book of Luke, the 24th chapter. If you've been at Pentecost very long, you've heard Luke 24 preached, preached again, and preached some more. Yeah. Especially the five or six verses that lead up to where I'm going to read. The Great Commission. The proof of who Jesus is. Yes. One of the proving points that he is not just the second person of the Trinity, but he is the mighty God, Amen. the everlasting Father, right. the Prince of Peace, yes. and that all things should be done in his name. Amen. For neither is there salvation in any other, Amen. for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Yes. Luke 24, 49, and I'm going to read one verse of scripture, and we're going to pray and you can be seated. And behold, I send the promise of, the, of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Elder, will you pray over the reading of the Lord? Lord. Lord, I thank you so much for your presence being with us. I thank you for the fire of your spirit, of yes, your presence, yes. God, being upon your servant and upon all yes. of us who are here, yes. God. Yes. Give us ears to hear, oh God. Give us yes. hearts to obey and to be changed. Make give us pliable yes. hearts this day, Lord, yes. that we will be conformed to the image and likeness of yourself, Jesus. Thank you so much this message that you're bringing forth that we need today for in this hour in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 No doubt probably one of the most quoted verses in Pentecost. But ye shall he said in, in Acts 1 and 8 but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And then here in the Great Commission, it's tied all together. He said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem 
until you be endued with power from on high. Now let me let me give you a backdrop of this message. This message came out of two conversations that I had over the past month and a half. One was with a man that told me in, a, in just general conversation. It always blows my mind when people want to come up to me and the first thing they tell me is I don't believe like you. I mean, I don't even know the man hardly. And he says, I don't believe like you. He said, I don't believe that all this Holy Ghost stuff is part of salvation. He said, I just believe it's just a added bonus to salvation. I said, well, you've never read Romans, the eighth chapter then, where it says, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Yes. That's what the Bible says. That's not what I say. Just bear with me. I'll preach. I promise. It's all right. And so that stirred me in my spirit because when you come against the doctrine of God, see, there are three doctrines that are mentioned in the Bible in the New Testament. There are the doctrines of men, plural, doctrines of men. Yep. There are, plural, the doctrines of devils. And there is singular mentioned in the New Testament, the doctrine of God. Amen. That's why we quote, there is one Lord, one faith, That's good. one baptism. Because there's only one doctrine. There's only one. There's only one name. There's only one Lord. There's one faith, one baptism, one God. He is Father of all. He is above all, through all, and in you all. And so that stirred me because I know that it is necessity. It is essential. For a person to be born again the way the Bible teaches for you to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's essential. It's not, it's not an added bonus to salvation. You've got to have the Holy Ghost if you're going to go to heaven. Can I preach, all right? Preach. So the second conversation that stirred this message was with Bishop Puckett. Bishop Puckett is our bishop and is the bishop at our church and uh, he is our pastor's father-in-law and I was sitting in his dining room one day about three or four weeks ago and we were having a conversation. He said, Brother Carson, what does the word endued mean in Mac or Luke 24, 49? I said, Elder, I've never looked the word up, but I would think that it means to bequeath into a garment. Or you shall be invested upon with clothing, and that clothing is power. Right. Just bear with me. I'm, I'm, I'm not done teaching the lesson just yet. I'll preach in a minute. So I got intrigued with this word because in, in the Strongs it says that enduo is a transitive verb. So I'm going to give you a little English lesson today. Transitive. What does that mean? It is a verb that accepts one or more objects. That's what a transitive verb is. An intransitive verb does not accept an object. So if I were to say, I'm about to go, go would be a intra an intransitive verb. It means I have not put an object to my going. Am I all right here? Yes, sir. There's no object of my going, but if I were to use go as a transitive verb, I would say I am about to go to church, and church would be the object of my going. Yeah. So endued is a transitive verb. It has an object. Endued with power. Power is the object yeah. that we are talking about. Now watch this. Transitivity is a global property of a clause by which activity, you got to hear this, because verb is an active word. It's an action word. Right. And transitivity, a transitive verb, means that it is it, it has an object that is transferred by activity from an agent to a patient. Oh my. Oh my. Told you the word was deep. Yeah. 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 So we are endued or we are clothed with 
power. So the object is power and the transitive verb is endured. So God is essentially the agent that is doing the transferring to the patient. Oh, come on. We don't call him Dr. Jesus for nothing. We don't say he's the great physician for no for no reason, uh, because he is transferring something that we need. Uh, we are the patient, uh, and he is the agent, uh, and he is enduing us uh, with power from on high. He is clothing us with majesty. He is clothing us uh, with dunamis, uh, is the Greek word. Uh, it's where we get the word dynamite uh, in the English. Uh, it's explosive uh, power. It's power to overcome. Uh, it's power to live right in this present world. It's power. It's a garment. Hallelujah. And he's put it on me. And that power causes me to be born. Not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by the word of God. Uh, it's not 
praise God. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Adam, you can't do it with self-made religion. Right. You can't do it with your own covering. Doesn't work. So God says, I'm going to take care of you. Genesis 3, 21. Unto Adam also unto his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin. Yeah. <laughs> Some men believe that when, he, when God did that, that, that the blood of that animal just still was trickling down their body just to let them know you caused an innocent something innocent to die for the guilty. A picture. Six verses earlier in Genesis 3.15 And I will put enmity between thy seed and her seed. Oh, and it shall bruise thy head. The seed of the woman is going to crush the head of the serpent. Yes, that's it. But it took blood. He made coats for them and he covered them and he said, your religion's not going to do you any good, but you've got to follow this way. Cain and Abel, you see the problem progresses. When Abel brought of the firstling of his flock and the Bible says that Cain brought of that which he tilled from the ground that was cursed. And the Bible says that God had respect unto Abel's offering, but to Cain's offering, he had not respect because Cain, you can't do it without blood. Because Cain, you can't do it unless you do it my way, said God. And Cain had perhaps space to repent, but you know the story. I'm telling you today, man-made religion will get you so messed up. It'll get you so confused. That's why the world is in such confusion right now. There's so much craziness going on in our society. Men don't know if they're men or women. Women don't know if they're women or men. They don't know, man. There's so much confusion. So much what they call trans or, or gender fluidity. I'm telling you that all, all that stuff is confusion. And where it comes from, it stems from men that try to do religion their own way. Yes. Amen. Uh, yes. Adam, it don't work. Just bear with me, man. I'll, I'll preach here in a minute, I promise. Yes. <coughs> Good. So you got to put on Christ. Yes. Amen. Yeah. I got Bible for that. Galatians 3 27, for as many as of you, for many, for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have what? Put on Christ. Have what? Put on Christ. Put on Christ. Clothed. Sinking into a garment. Endued with power. Endued with power. So let's talk about this for a moment. Isaiah prophesied about it. In the 61st chapter of the book of Isaiah, one of the very first, if not the first messages that Jesus preached yeah. in the synagogue, yeah. the Bible says that he read this scripture, Isaiah 50 or 61, and the Bible says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to the opening of the prison of them, to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, to give the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness 
the planting of the Lord that he may or might be glorified. Skip down into verse 10 and the Bible says this. Read verse 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God for he hath what? He hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with jewels. And the Bible says in verse 11, listen up. And the Bible says, For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, as a garden causeth the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all nations. I'm telling you today, He has clothed us in garments of salvation, and He has robed us in a robe of righteousness. He was speaking of the day that Messiah would come because the first time Jesus appeared in a synagogue, the man that was in charge of the synagogue brought in the scroll of the book of Isaiah and he opened Isaiah 61 and he read the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach and he rolled the scroll back and he handed it back to the man in charge. He made this declaration and he said this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears it's fulfilled but he put on he put on us clothes he put on us garments of salvation he clothed us elder he put it on us we sunk into that garment God have mercy. I feel like preaching right now. When we sunk into that garment, it wasn't just some little old, pretty little robe that we put on. No, no. We put on the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We put on power that causes us to overcome. We sunk in to a garment that caused me to be able to be a witness. I used to be this way. But God, he brought me out. I'm telling you, you may, you may try to refute the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, but you cannot tell me my experience wasn't real. I was there when it happened. I know what I felt. I know what went on inside of me, and I know the change that God made in my life. Brought me out of darkness, put me in the light, brought me out of alcohol, and made me Sinking into a garment, he put on us. Man, there's so much in this scripture. In Isaiah 61, the trade doesn't even seem fair to me. He gave me beauty for my actions. He traded me. He gave me the oil of joy for my morning. He traded me. That's why I was so excited when you talk about rejoicing and the joy yeah. of the Holy Ghost. Yes. And, and he gave me a garment of praise yeah. Woo! Yeah. for the spirit of heaviness. What a God. I was heavy. Yeah. I was messed up. Hold my reins right now. Just this one. The trade doesn't, it doesn't even seem like God's a good tradesman in this in this scripture. But I'm telling you, it was good for me. Yes. 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 Because He can shoulder it. Yes. That's why He said, "Come unto Me, all ye that lay." 
labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your soul, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I'm telling you today, there's something about living for God that lifts every burden, that brings every heaviness off of my life, because in the name of Jesus, I have been endued with power from on high. Nothing moves me. Nothing shakes me. Because I'm on the rock. And the rock cannot be moved. Yeah. Hallelujah. Whoa. It can't be moved. But he said something else. This is really where I want to go. I had forgot what I'm preaching. He said something else in, in there. And he he talked about and called us trees of righteousness. I may have preached some of this before. I don't know here. But bear with me in my folly if I have. And let's go again. That they might be called trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. That he may be glorified. Trees. Trees. Why is God liking us to trees? Let me tell you why. God's word is so majestically put together that no scientist, no scholar, no agnostic, no atheist can refute or prove it wrong. That's right, right, right. Nobody can prove it wrong. Every time they try, they prove it right. Yes. <laughs> I know this is different for me, but just bear with me. Man, y'all don't even know what I'm trying to hold back. That's all right. Preach. Trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Something strange happens to a tree. I hate wintertime. I'm just going to be honest. Come on, somebody. I, it, I, it can be 95 in the shade and 85, 90% humidity. And it really don't bother me that much. Amen. But when it gets below 60, I'm not, I'm not a fan of it. I got a witness right here. Especially when it gets cold. And the reason I really don't like winter eating in the cold is it looks dead. Right? Yeah, that too. Yeah. Unless you live where there's a ton of evergreens, it looks dead. Why? Because the trees lose their foliage. They lose their crown. But during the winter time, hear me now, there's more life going on in that tree than what you think there is. That's right. Amen. Because the winter is normally the wet season. And those, those trees during the wet season, those roots are doing something. They're, they're taking in the water that's falling. And when the water filters through the soil, it, it, the soil holds valuable nutrients that the water collects and then the trees soak it up through the roots. And during the spring of the year, after all of that stuff has happened, and after that tree looks like it's been dead for six months, and the warm weather begins to come. What went on underneath the ground for those six months that nobody saw working, that got me depressed looking at what wasn't going on? Yeah. Hear me today. Yeah. Starts changing. When the weather starts warming up and the spring comes. Yeah. Yeah. Because all that water and all those nutrients that got stored up in those roots in the spring of the year and the warm comes, that water begins to move up. Yeah. 
And the sap, they call it the sap rising in the tree. Now there's something strange about the sap rising in the tree. I used to work for a log. I drove the truck out of the woods and hauled the logs to the lumber yards or where to the log the sawmills. And in the spring of the year, you could mark it. You could damage a tree during the spring of the year way easier than you could damage the tree any other time because there was so much pressure on that tree because the sap was rising in that tree. Watch what it did. The sap literally separates the out from the in. That's good. Hear me. And it, and it causes a, there to be a separation from what you see on the outside to what's going on on the inside because the sap causes so much pressure in that tree. And you can drive a steer up next to one of those standing trees uh, and it'll just peel the bark off. Uh, and, a, and a poplar tree especially, man, it'll just take the whole tree down just about. The bark will just fly apart uh, because it's not connected uh, with the inside of the tree uh, because there's a separation going on because of what the sap is doing uh, in that tree. The sap is bringing life, uh, but it's too much pressure for the flesh of the tree to handle. <laughs> Y'all ain't hearing me. Yes, sir. <laughs> Boy, y'all don't even know. And that sap, it begins to get out to the branches. And buds start forming. Because there's life in that sap. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, there's, there's things that start taking place and then all of a sudden on those first few warm days after the buds come, green starts coming out on that tree and life begins to take place again. And all the life that it brings... Hallelujah. It, my, my, my. That, that's no wonder why the Bible said in Psalm 104, 16, and it likens it to the Holy Ghost. He says the trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of, of Lebanon, which he had planted. Why did God say that? Because there's life in the sap, and there's life in the Holy Ghost. It's like what we get when we get filled, when we get endued with power from on high. We get clothes. And what does it do? It clothes that tree in a garment of leaves. And fruit begins to come out all over that tree. And it's pleasant to everybody around. And when it starts producing, and when the leaves come out, the bark on the outside of the tree says, I've got to line up to what's going on on the inside. And it draws back up. And it connects itself back this flesh don't like it uh, when God's moving, uh, but if you'll let God move uh, on the inside, uh, Jesus uh, will show up uh, on the outside. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's all right to you. Hallelujah. And it forms a crown over that tree. <laughs> it closes the tree in the leaves and they begin to produce fruit. Galatians 5. Now the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, gentleness, long-suffering, meekness, temperance, faith. Against such there is no law. There's something about that fruit. It attracts. Man, when I was preparing for this message a few weeks ago, and I preached it at home, I don't know, two or three weeks ago, God spoke to me in prayer the morning before I preached it, and he said, your goal in this life is to present me so desirable that everybody around you will want me. And that's what the fruit of the tree does. 
Man, I'm going to tell you something. I've been teaching a Bible study to an elderly couple back home. And I go there every Monday night and for every Monday evening at 530. Two weeks ago, she brought me some peaches. This old lady, this elderly lady brought me this basket of peaches. And when I took those peaches home, the aroma filled my truck. And they tasted better than they smelled. Sweetest things I've ever ate in my life. I don't know how they got them so sweet. Mama used to sweeten them with sugar to get them sweet enough for us. But when I cut into it, it was like eating liquid. There was so much juice. They were so desirable. And when you produce the fruit of the Spirit, you will make Jesus so desirable that everybody around you will want to know what you've got. The aroma. No wonder the psalmist said in Psalm 34, 8, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. When you produce the fruit of the Spirit, it makes God taste good to this world. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. The root, but it starts in the roots. That's it. Isaiah prophesied about it in 11 and 10. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. That shall stand for an ensign of the people, yeah. and it shall, and to it shall the Gentiles seek. I'm telling you, and he says, and his and his rest shall be glorious. I'm telling you, the Gentiles are going to seek that root because out of that root comes the nutrients that that is needed to give life to the church. All oh, the trees of the Lord, they're full of sap. That's why Jesus comes along in John 15 and he said, I am the vine and ye are the branches. You've got to be hooked up on the vine if you're going to produce in this world he is everything. He's the root. He's the vine. And he said, you're the branches. But the branches is where the fruit is produced. God says, I don't produce the fruit. You produce it through what I do in you. Watch this. Because power is transferred from the agent to the patient. I'm going somewhere with that. Just bear with me. I'm the vine, he said. You're the branches. The leaves don't come out on the vine. The leaves come out on the branches. The fruit doesn't grow on the vine. It grows on the branches. Yes, sir. Right. And we've been endued with power. The sap that rises up in us, the Holy Ghost, and pushes. Pushes so hard against the flesh, it'll either do one or two things. It'll cause us to be offended well, by the word of God or it'll cause the outside to line up with what's going on on the inside. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Don't tell me holiness don't matter. Come on. Yeah. Oh. Hello. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Don't tell me what's on the outside doesn't matter. That's right. Yeah. I ain't here to preach a clothesline message, but I'm telling you what goes on the inside of me is it's going to show up on the outside or there ain't nothing going on on the inside. Every time. Every time. I'm right. preaching better. You're responding on yes, that. Sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Sounds like that old song that we used to sing in Bible school. Jesus on the inside. Working on the, working on the outside. Oh, oh, what a change in my life. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Yes. Because it works from the inside out. Yes. That's the way the sap in the trees work. That's so good. It starts where you can't see it. The so spirit good. bloweth where it listeth. And yeah. thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it came. I'm telling you, I can't see him. the spirit moving. But I can tell you where it's been. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because I can see the results. Oh, praise God. Because everywhere that it's been on the life of a man, he's producing the acceptable fruit or the peaceable fruit of the Spirit. There's something going on on the inside, and it's manifesting to the world on the outside. Yes. Oh, God. I'm going to start closing now. 
It's ironic, man. Maybe it's not ironic. 22 years ago today, I preached my very first message. 22 years ago today, August 15th, 1999. And I preached out of Ezekiel 47. Mm, glory. I'll never forget it. I don't know why anybody ever asked me to preach again after that. It's pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this may be sad. I don't know. Hide that for just a minute, will you? Thank you. Ezekiel 47, and I'm coming to a close. God has got the prophet at the threshold of the door of the temple. Now I put a hold of that. <laughs> Preach. And we're just going to say this as it is. This is the threshold of the door right here. Yes. And out of that door, mm -hmm. he said, I saw a river. Oh, my. <laughs> Let me backtrack for just a minute and close. Yes, sir. Psalm 1, 1 through 3. Yes. Uh -oh. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A tree planted by a river. Yes. And Ezekiel says he saw a river that issued out from the throne. That's where it was, really. Yeah. Yeah. It was from the throne. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it. And he said the man had a line in his hand and he measured out a thousand cubits. <laughs> and I wish you could feel what I feel right now. I do. And he said he measured that thousand cubits out and he stepped down. And he said it was waters to his ankles. And the man with the reed in his hand or the line in his hand measured out a thousand more cubits. And he said, walk, Ezekiel. I don't know if this camera's on or not, but I'm going to be out of the frame of it for a minute. And he got down here in this part of the river and he said it was waters to his knees. Amen. He measured out a thousand more. And he said it was waters to his loins. And he measured out a thousand more and he kept walking. Till he couldn't walk anymore. And it was waters that could not be passed over. Waters to swim in. And then he brought him back to the bank of the river. And then he looked and he began to see the goings on. He said he saw the fishers of Engedi. And they cast their nets. And there were many fish. And he said he saw trees. Put that up there again for me, if you will. 47 is what it is. And by the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for me. You've got to remember, Jesus said, it'll be like a river yeah. of living water. And this spake he of the Spirit. Amen. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus had not yet been glorified. But now, yeah. we're at that river right now. That river issued out of an upper room in Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 4. All right. Amen. It said, shall grow all trees for me whose leaf shall not fade. Sounds a whole lot like Psalm 1, doesn't it, sir? Mm -hmm. 
neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. Now let me let me explain this for just a second. Well, he really explains it in the next little verse or in the next little partial sentence. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months. When he says the fruit's not going to be consumed, he's saying God's more than enough. Yes. He's saying you can pluck it off today and it'll be back to Yes, sir. Hey. Yes, sir. Because he's more than enough. Yes, he is. <laughs> That's why he brought water out of a rock in Israel in the yes. wilderness. He said, I'm more than enough. I don't know. He's there's no limitation to what God can do. There's no limitation. For the young, he gives it without measure. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary and the fruit thereof shall be for meat and the leaf thereof shall be for medicine. Now let me talk about this because we're the branches. We are where the leaves grow. And if you remember the word in the beginning endued with power, a transitive verb, it is the removal or the transferring of something, of an object from an agent to a patient. I was the patient. I was the one that needed help. I was the one that was in trouble. I was in a sin sick state in my life. But he said, when I get done with you, the leaves that you produce are going to be for medicine for everybody else that's around you that was bound in the same bondages that you were bound with. He gave me the healing property when he gave me the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And he said, ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem in Judea, in the Samaria, into the uttermost part of the earth. And everywhere you go, it's going to bring healing to everybody you come in contact with. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. That's the power of being a witness. So the witness can change the dynamic of a court ruling. Because when there's a witness that comes in, a man might have been accused of being guilty. But when the witness says, hey, it wasn't him, he's been born again. Yeah, oh, come on, come on, come on. I've got to testify to his goodness because he brought me out. He didn't bring me out just for myself. He brought me out uh, to be healing uh, to everybody around me. Yeah. I've got to make him desire. Oh I've got to present him in such a way. That's why the outside matters so much. Because when the outside lines up with the inside of them, have a nasty attitude. So good. Hello, somebody. Because what goes on in here, when it gets out here, people see my good works and they glorify my Father which is in heaven. That's my purpose. Yes, sir. That's the purpose. And the leaf thereof to medicine. And I was the patient. So now... I'm the doctor's assistant. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> and I administer what he gave me to give to this world. Freely have you received. Freely give. Why don't we stand all over this house right now? I feel the Holy Ghost.
and talent. Yeah. I made it this This is, you know, those old uh, jukeboxes in the old uh, Yeah, for boys. She's like this unlimited. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Just put a, put a dollar in instead of a quarter. Right? <laughs> <laughs> She's more valuable than a quarter. She's more valuable than a dollar, too. Amen. Yeah, Sister Ruth is the mobile program. She brought in an abundance of food. I see bananas back there that is calling my name. Four pieces of bananas, tons of paper pots, and a whole fridge full of yogurt. It's got to go. There's tons of salad and bottles. Salad? Yeah. So. And watermelon. So. All right. No, please. Please go back there. Take several bunches of bananas and eat them morning, noon, and night. Make banana pudding and banana bread and bring me a loaf of the bread. <laughs> Amen. But uh, God bless you again. Thank you, Kayla, for being here. It's wonderful having you. We love you in this church. And uh, Brother Carson, what a message. Yeah. What a message. Praise God. Am I forgetting something? Wednesday night. Wednesday night Bible study. I didn't forget it, and I pray you don't. We really do have amazing Bible study for Wednesday night. Chris, you keep bringing that little boy to church. I'll tell you what, he's all eyes on the platform when he's here in Norman. When people clap their hands, he's just zoned in on it. He's, but he's learning. He's learning. He's acquiring how to worship and pray. <laughs> This way, Buzz. <laughs> Praise God. Let's uh, stand if you can, and we'll be dismissed in Jesus' name. Brother Earl, why don't you dismiss us with a word of prayer? <coughs> Lord, we thank you that we have feasted at your table today. We Amen. honor you, Lord. We honor you, we honor you, we honor you the man of God that you brought in our midst today. But Lord, I thank you for the power of your word to strengthen and to encourage and to empower us and to teach us more what it is to be endued with power from on high and to be clothed with garments of righteousness. Oh Lord, I thank you so much. Send us forth, oh God, with confidence in your word, the assurance of your salvation that you've given us freely, Lord, and to tell the world what you've given us, oh Lord, that we may bear fruit for your glory, that the name of Jesus be magnified and exalted. Yes, oh Lord, wherever we go, Lord, in your name.